right. So thanks. So I'm going to talk about privacy and application against the active quantum adversary and the quantum proof non available iterator. And uh, once again, this is joint work with DV Jaguar, Kamin Chow, and Tom Thomas Vidic. So what is privacy invocation? Well, privacy invocation is a protocol where Alice and Bob share some weak secret X, and uh, they want to extract some uniform shared uniform random key R. And uh, in the passive case, there is uh, the adversary E here that has a that has a set of E about the shared randomness X, and the Eve also sees everything passed between X and Bob. This can be done by a strong randomness iterator. <coughs> and a strong randomness iterator is a determinist function, so the function takes the random source X and attains the uniform random CY, and they want to output some uniform random bit. And the trade output should be un close to, to uniform condition on uh, the random seed and uh, the side information E. So, how does this do help us do passive <coughs> privacy application? Well, at least just pass the random seed Y to Bob. So, because uh, the output <coughs> and the both output, the uh, iterator output of x, again, with respect to y as the random seed. And because the random seed is still random condition on y being known, so this will, the extract output will be random with respect to what if known. And uh, what about uh, active adversary? Well, active adversary <coughs> can change y to some y prime not equal to y. So this breaks the previous construction, but in uh, this case has been studied a lot classically. And uh, actually, this can be done with a two-round protocol by though this week. And uh, the protocol use a construction called normal label trader, and that's why we study it in this work. And what about the quantum case? Well, the quantum <coughs> case of uh, qu active quantum adversary uh, still have the power to change y to y prime, but now also the side information E is the quantum state. And uh, this scenario comes naturally when you try to run some quantum protocol like QKD. And our result is we control the first privacy and publication protocol secure against quantum active adversary. And uh, this is done by uh, running do this week and uh, construct the uh, first quantum proof normal label iterator. And uh, the, I guess the weak point of our protocol is that we have a really high mean entropy requirement. The number of <coughs> the mean entropy need to be bigger than n over two bits. Okay, so let's see how the DWO9 protocol runs. So this is the DWO9 protocol. It starts, I hope you can see, it starts here. So first, Alice use the non trader and the sample random from un uniformly random y, y and uh, it trades on k. Then she pays the random seed, and Eve might change that to some y prime. And Bob trade a k prime by that y prime. Then Bob sample another <coughs> random C Y B and the user make a message authentication code. Use this K prime as a key to the make and the paste Y B and the take back. Then even my change Y B and T to another Y B prime and T prime. Then <coughs> then at least just check whether the make match. And if it doesn't match, then she reject otherwise. Both of them use another strong iterator to extract x with yb prime and yb. So why is this secure? So let's discuss this in two cases. First is if y equals yb, ya prime. Then just because the iterator is a deterministic function, then k will equal to y prime, k prime. So Alice and Bob will have the same key on their make, and uh, the security just 
<coughs> guaranteed by the make. What about <coughs> if change y a to y prime? Well, now we have some problems. So we have some k prime here that might depend on k, but different from k. And uh, so those those two make has different key that might be related to each other, and the make actually cannot guarantee security in this case. That's why we need normal label extractor. So normal label extractor is very similar to extractor, except that uh, the adversary also know, know the extractor output to some different seed Y prime. So Y prime is a seed that Eve can choose. So instead of just condition Y and E, E trade output is uniform, you also need to condition Y prime and E trade and resolve Y prime. Now, if, now, if, now that we know this is a non labor trader here, so K prime, K will be uniform with respect to K. So K prime and K are kind of independent, so this is nice. Make him work in this way. Or more like if, yeah. So they will abort if y changes to y prime. And uh, how about the content security? Well, the uh, previous work proved that the DW09 protocol is secure also in quantum case. Uh, but they didn't achieve a full privacy amplification against active quantum adversary because they didn't control the number label iterator correctly. So we'll focus on number label iterator. So what is the quantum proven on iterable iterator and why is it hard? Uh, well, the biggest problem is E prime here. So remember, Eve can. Uh, produce the uh, Y prime as she wish. And uh, of course, she was going to, what she will do is, she will do a measurement on all the information she holds, so that's the quantum state E, and uh, the seed Y prime here. But remember that basic quantum mechanics says if you do a measurement, then your quantum state collapses to something else. So E will collapse to another quantum state E prime. And so what you want to, about your iterator is instead of condition on E, the output being uniform, it should be condition on E prime and the output is uniform. But that's a big problem because you cannot condition on E anymore and the condition on E prime, you will lose the independence between X and Y. And the iterator always needs the independence between the inputs. So this is a page talk more about this. So classically, the site information is not a big problem because people always condition on the site information being some value and the X and Y are independent and nice. But in quantum case, if you condition on E prime, then X and Y are not independent. This can be triggered by an easy classical case of E, just, e prime just equal to E, e plus Y. And uh, if you know quantum Markov chain, you might say oh, maybe we can use some quantum Markov chain structure to argue for independence between X and Y. But we try a whole bunch of combinations. They either are not quantum Markov chain or they are they leave trivial information. So these don't quite work either. And uh, so we bypass this problem by exporting the inner product structure of D12. The uh, uh, normal label iterator controlled by Lee, and uh, actually use this point by use this structure at two different points, and uh, this is also done by a reduction to communication gain. So let's talk about the normal label iterator of E Lee. So the iterator has a really simple form, just look like this. So X is <coughs> a vector of T elements over F P. Y is a vector of T over two element over P, FP. Uh, unless you are doing square, then it's over FP to the T over two. So the double line here is concatenation. So Y and the y, y square concatenations together. That's also in FT over FP to the T. So those are nice. So 
and the breaking outside is inner product. So the output is an element in FP. Uh, so the classical intuition is this. Uh, we see inner product is a good two-source iterator, and we just see is this a number iterator. But obviously it's not. There is a really simple attack that's just y prime is a linear function of y, y prime equal to ay. Then <coughs> you calculate the, uh, the iterate output against y prime and the uh, easy by the linearity is just a times the output of y. So this, but we want this to be close to uniform condition on this, so obviously this is not true. But we say, oh, well, maybe it's just a linear function is bad, so we encode y to something like linear. Maybe this will be a non linear iterator, and uh, that works. So let's see this again. So this is a requirement of non linear non iterator. We want the output condition on output of uh, y prime is uniform. So first step is use this XO lemma that says if there's a z0 plus az is close to uniform for all a, then z0 condition on z is close to uniform condition on z. And let's just match things together. So let's say z0 is uh, the number we trade output and the z is output with y prime. So this side is, looks close to what we want to prove. So we want to need to prove this side. And uh, this I know is where we use the inner product structure. So if you just plug in what's, what's the plus az here, you have this nice structure of x inner product with x and the function of y and y prime here. There's a really nice form here. So we reduce our problem to prove this inner product of this whole thing is close to uniform. And what's the second step? Well, so first we do some notation to make things easier. So let's say this whole thing is just a function g sub a of y and y prime. And uh, it's really to show with some algebra solving polynomials. And uh, you will see that this is at most two to one function. So this function only loses one bit of entropy from y. So this is that one bit of entropy. <coughs> Then, so G has lots of entropy, and uh, X can also have lots of entropy. And because it's a two-source iterator, you can iterate some running out. So what about the quantum setting? Well, first, we, first step, we want to do the non-uniform SO lemma two again. Well, there is no, no quantum proof, non-uniform non SO lemma proof, so we prove it ourselves. Actually, we prove two SO lemmas. One is the standard version, where there is no two, no two register x naught and x. This is just x, and uh, you say x inner product with a is close to uniform, and x is close to uniform. Oh, sorry, the quantum part is that now the, the information E here is our all quantum states. Yeah, so we prove those two XO lemma. And uh, how we prove the quantum XO lemma is by generalizing a classical proof based on collision probability. So we define a quantum, uh, sorry, so we use the quantum collision probability, which is defined by TSA theta. So this is the quantum collision probability. Uh, the formula looks quite complicated, but the case we use is when A is the classical register and uh, Sigma b, uh, sigma b is just rho b. So in that case, this is more manageable, and uh, you can prove that the condition probability gamma c is actually less than 1, so you feel more comfortable calling the probability. And uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, and uh, as a sentence check, if you also p put the b register as classical, then we'll reduced to the classical collision probability, so the uh, sum of probability square. And so the good properties of this thing is first, there is the bond between, which like, I like to think of this as bond between one known and the two known. So the trace distance to uniform and the collision probability can bond each other. And this is like a Cauchy-Schwarz thing. 
And also, you can just expand the middle term. This is an easy equation to check. So a quick sketch of uh, how you prove the standard XO lemma is, let's say this, remember we want to prove that this is true and that is true. So let's say A in the product with X is Z. So first we start with the trace density of Z to uniform, and uh, we use the first equation to get that to a bound on collision probability. Then use second equation to expand this algebra, then you get to collision probability of x. Then you just use the first equation again to get the bound on trace density of x. Then you prove this. And the proof of the non-uniform one is similar. OK, so we prove we succeed in our first completion to get this equation we want to prove. But the E prime is still here and it's still breaking independence, and uh, that's really annoying. So, how we deal with E prime? Do we carefully analyze its independence on everything? No, that's too complicated. <laughs> so, actually, how about just uh, try not talk about it at all? Yeah, that's much easier. So, this is done by a reduction to communication gain, and uh, the, this reduction of quantum proof iterator to communication gain is actually quantum common. And uh, I would like to think that it's for a similar reason. OK, so how does the communication work? Communication gain work. So remember, we want to prove this thing. The inner part of X and G is close to uniform. Well, the idea is that if it's, uh, it's kind of uh, Negation proof, so proof by contradiction. So if it's easy to distinguish it from uniform, then it's kind of easy to guess the exact value of this thing. Of course, it's a factor of p loose, but p is log size, so it's OK here. So we change our goal to guess the value of the inner product and rearrange everything into a communication gain. So what you can do, you can get the side information of E about x. So <coughs> we have uh, Alice that hold the X and send our quantum information E out to Bob. And Bob knows, and uh, Eve knows Y, so Bob knows Y. And uh, Eve can produce the Y prime not equal Y, so Bob will also output the Y prime. And Eve needs to guess the inner part of X and G. So Bob will output the inner part of X and G with respect to the same Y prime he output. And uh, now we successfully hide the E prime. E prime now is just an internal variable of calculation of Bob, and uh, it's not, uh, not obviously outside of this problem. And know that this is the relational communication problem. So the usual communication problem will be Alice and Bob want to compute a function of f, and w f of x and y. But now Bob gets to choose this y prime. So he can output multiple correct, there are multiple correct answers he probably can output. Now we reduce to this communication again, but how do we bound this? The idea is use the inner product structure here again, and uh, so we can just apply a Fourier transform to reconstruct X. But if Bob can reconstruct X, then X cannot have too much entropy condition on E. So uh, as a toy model, let's say Alice and Bob want to do communication again uh, in a part of in X and Y. And uh, to make it even easier, let's say they are doing F2. So in a part of is just the uh, inner part of B string that everyone's familiar with. So if Bob can calculate X in a part of Y for all Y, then obviously he can construct this oracle of Y to minus one to the X in a part of with Y. Then Bob can calculate x easily as this. So he prepare the uniform superposition of everything. Then apply this oracle. So uniform superposition times the minus one to x dot y. Then if he just apply a head on every qubit, then Bob will recover x. x. And so that's a toy model. Of course, in the real model, you need to change F2 back to FP, and then you need to think about what GA do. 
and the uh, bubble don't succeed on everything actually well considered on low success probability of one over p plus epsilon and uh, the input is over uniform y but if you check the maze everything works out and we can get a bound on the mean entropy of x condition on e that depends on the success, success probability of this protocol the one by some here and uh, also this over to that get carried to everywhere that's the uh, entropy search hole. And then you trace back to everything, you can prove the security of the non malleable traitor. Okay, so a quick summary. Uh, we give the first privacy application protocol uh, secure against quantum activity adversary by doing, uh, by construct the quantum proof non malleable traitor. And our iterator has the uh, <coughs> mean entropy requirement of bigger than over two bits. So uh, obvious future question will be, can we construct a non malleable iterator with entropy breaking this and over two search hole? Yeah. So thank you. Any questions? Uh, so, so uh, I mean, just one quick question. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, so you proved uh, that this non malleable uh, uh -huh. uh, extractor is quantum proof. Like, uh, what would the, the difficulty be if you would try to prove like some other uh, non malleable extractor is quantum proof? Yeah, so I think this can be answered in two directions. One is extend the or existing iterator and the proof to quantum, and that one is generalizing this to other iterators. So the existing iterators, the, I guess the most popular one, are based on alternate instructions, and that depends crucially on condition on sending information, things are independent. And uh, as we talk about, uh, we'll just change E to E prime, and uh, we don't have quite have a way to deal with E prime. And uh, the other thing is extending our work to other things. But as I said earlier, we use the inner product structure here on two points. So first one is we use this and uh, the XOR lemma to compress the, the variables. And uh, that one thing is hard to generalize to other case. The other place we use is use it to do uh, reconstruction and to bound the communication again. That seems to be doable if you try hard enough. But uh, the XO lemma part seems pretty hard to generalize. Yeah. Uh, let's thank the speaker again.